Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that you've had a great afternoon and I hope that you've had a great Lord's Day. I know we have and we thank you for joining us tonight. Tonight I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalm chapter 30. Psalm chapter 30. We continue our thoughts on the book of Psalm. And this particular psalm is kind of interesting because I read where it seems that David had suffered some sort of tragedy or he had suffered some sort of affliction that seemed to put him at the point of death. Have you ever been like that? Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you're just at the point of death and you don't know which way to turn or what to do? And so maybe you can draw some encouragement from this psalm like, uh, David. Some believe that maybe this was a time that David escaped a plague that God had brought uh, on Israel or God had brought David out of this. Uh, whatever is happening, David is facing some sort of um, tragedy or difficulty and he feels like he's at the point of death. So I want you to notice what David writes in this psalm, Psalm 30. He says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. And so David, in this situation of facing this difficulty, he cries out to God. He's giving us the blessedness of answered prayer. He, he's, he's thanking God for him answering prayer. And so he extols, he praises God because God had lifted him up out of this He'll say later, out of this pit, out of this tragedy, or out of this difficulty, out of this pain and suffering that he had been in, whether uh, it was from these plagues or whether it was from uh, enemies that David talked about, they, they had a play in this, whether there was a plague going on or not, not sure, but David had some enemies over him or enemies um, uh, would rejoice if he had died. And so he praises God that God lifted him up from that place. He lifted him up so that his foes, his enemies, would not rejoice uh, if he had died. He says, O oh Lord my God, I cried out to you and you heard me. David says the God of the universe heard his cry. And so when we are at the pit of despair, when we are struggling and when we are at that point, we don't know where to turn. David gives us an example, turn to God. The God of the universe, He will hear, especially those who seek Him, those who want to follow Him, those who love Him and turn to Him and submit to Him. He will hear. O oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave, or your version say may, may say Sheol. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. In other words, he says, God, it's you who have kept me alive. You, I was at the point of death, and it's as if you reached down and pulled me up out of the grave. And he said, you are the one that has kept me alive. God works in the lives of his people. God had a purpose for David, but we know through the life of David, David forgot who he was sometime for a period of life, and he suffered greatly because of it. He suffered after, after because of it. His family suffered because of the things that he did that was contrary to God's will. But there's hope in the story because here David is, whatever this difficulty that he's going through, David is giving praise to God. And he says, you have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit, that I should not die. But notice what he says in verses 4 and 5. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For His anger is but for a moment, His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
Not only is David praising God, but he encourages others. He encourages his readers. Sing praises to the Lord, you saints of His, you followers of God. Sing His praises. And then he says, as if, as if God is punishing him for some sin or disobedience. He says, for his, God's, anger is but for a moment. You remember the Hebrew writer said that God chastens those he loves. He disciplines those he loves. And God loves David, and he loves you and I who want to follow him and please him and serve him. And so David says his anger is just for a moment. Weeping may be endured for a night. But the discipline of God doesn't last like that unless we continue turning from God and then God's eventually going to uh, cut us off from His will because we keep uh, ignoring His Word. We keep turning from Him. But David shows some repentance here like he does in other places in his life. He shows some repentance here and he says, listen, this anger is just for a moment. Weeping lasts only for a night, but his favor is for life. And joy comes in the morning. The joy of forgiveness, the joy of mercy and grace, the joy of a renewed relationship with God, the joy of a renewal from repentance, the joy of renewal of walking with God again. The joy comes in the morning. And notice what he says in verse 6. Now in my prosperity... I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit it is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. David admits in his prosperity, maybe he had become arrogant. Maybe he had become prideful uh, because he was putting his faith in uh, his prosperity. In that prosperity, he said, I shall never be moved. He was, uh, but he said, Lord, by your favor, you had made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face and I was troubled. You see, it was in that time when David turned from God that he realized God's face was hidden, and therefore he didn't like that, and he wanted to repent, and he wanted to turn back to God. He wanted God on his side. Remember Saul, same thing happened to Saul, but Saul kept turning from God. David, when he turned from God, when he realized it, he repented and turned back to God. And he said, I cried out to you, O Lord. And he said, Lord, I made my supplication. What good is it if I go down? He's praying to God. God, what good is it is I, if I die? Will the, will the dirt praise you? Will it declare your truth? He said, I can't praise you if I'm dead. And I want to praise you, Lord. Uh, please forgive me. And I want to praise you. And then look at uh, verse 10. He says, O Lord, and have mercy. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, be my helper. And the Bible says the Lord heard him. And the Lord was his helper. In verses 11 and 12, he says, You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. Now, when there, there's a song that I heard when I was in youth ministry. And I used to think, You've turned my mourning into dancing. And I used to think, Mourning? That didn't make sense. It wasn't the mourning that comes in the morning. It's the mourning. It's the weeping. It's the... Um, crying out out of fear and out of um, frustration of leading on his own prosperity. It's the mourning over I've failed you God and I've disappointed you God. And he says you've turned my mourning into dancing. In other words, what does dancing mean? When, what, when do we dance? Oh we dance when I'm sad. We dance because things aren't going well. No, we dance because we're happy. We dance because things are great. We dance because uh, there's things to celebrate and be excited about. And he says, you've turned my mourning, 
when my weeping, you've turned that into dancing. You've turned it into gladness because you have heard me and you have answered my prayer. You have put off my sackcloth. Sackcloth is sadness. It's what in the Old Testament especially, it's what people would do to show their mourning. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. Same thing as he's already said. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I'm going to give thanks to you forever. You have turned my sadness. You have turned my gloom. You have turned this sad day where I thought I was to the point of death. You have turned it into gladness. You have made my joy complete. You know, in the New Testament, the New Testament promises the same thing to those who would come to Jesus in faith and obedience to submit and give their life, to submit their life to His authority, to say, Lord, You are King of my life, and I want to live that way, knowing that sometimes we're going to make mistakes. Sometimes we, like David, we turn to sin. We turn to the flesh. We turn to the pleasures of the flesh. And it's in that time of repentance when we feel away from God, when we can turn back to God. And maybe you, you're living a life like that, and maybe you want to give your life, submit your life to the authority of King Jesus. You can do that today. Yeah, just give us a call. Call someone um, that, that can help you allow, that can help you and assist you in giving your life to the Lord and dying with Him in the watery grave of baptism because you believe in Him and you're tired of living that life without Him. Or maybe you have given your life to the Lord and you have turned from Him and you feel like you're living away from Him and and you feel like David, that despair. Lord, and you cry out to the Lord, Lord, help me, save me, bring me out of this point. And God, like He did for David, can turn your mourning, your weeping, your cry for help into joy, into gladness. But we have to turn to Him. Will you, will you turn things over to Him? Will you turn your life over to Him? Submit to His authority. Give your life to Him. Turn your life back over to Him so that He can bless you. The Lord wants to do that. And He's willing to do that. Will you do so? Will you turn your life back to Him? Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope that this psalm, again, has been helpful. I always enjoy looking at these psalms. There's so much more that we don't even have time to deal with in this short video. But I want to encourage you to keep reading the psalms. Just keep reading God's Word. But especially keep reading the psalms. There's so much we can gain from the life of David and others that we can apply to our life. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless.